this video I'm going to go over kind of where I left off with the channel and kind of where I picked up. So most all of this is going to be based upon mostly pictures and kind of like a slideshow. Um, I originally created the channel to do, <clears throat> you know, just for the heck of it, you know, at the beginning. Uh, and then I was having fun with it. We were doing, me and my friends and stuff would do, you know, strange things, stuff with uh, uh, automotive things, repairs and stuff. And, um, and then I just stopped um, recording and uh, <clears throat> decided to claim my channel back before someone else did because you can actually claim dead channels out there. There's a way that you can go in there <clears throat> and basically capture their YouTube channel and you can reset the password and get back in there because I don't remember what my password was you know four or five years back so I couldn't even get into my own account um, and so that's why I went ahead and took my account back before someone else did because it's an old channel this is before Google bought YouTube out and it was the one of the original accounts so anyhow um, there's a quite a few uh, updates and videos I'm gonna be loading up but uh, what I ended up doing was shortly after I stopped filming YouTube ch uh, videos I actually started um, I changed careers and started a family and just a whole bunch of other different things and um, what I'm gonna do in this video is show you kinda you know some of the things that were the tail end of where I left off a long time ago because I have pictures of it and stuff and then uh, we'll go into what I ended up doing uh, after that and what I ended up doing was uh, I went in and started um, doing excavating and dirt work and tractor work and and that kind of stuff um, I know no one actually knows what I did beforehand I wasn't a mechanic or anything like that I actually worked in the computer field for at that time it would have been probably like 10 years or 9 years uh, now it's it would have been like 14 years now it's pretty close to 14 years at the time maybe give or take a few because I've been out of the, the computer field for for about you know seven years or so now and uh, but I used to work on computers I used to um, uh, be a uh, systems engineer uh, configuring servers and, and networks and routers and uh, databases and, and all that kind of stuff and went to college and uh, got certified and um, I was a consultant I was in-house IT I was several different things uh, I worked as you know different different types of lines of, of, of work but that's a different uh, video uh, you know discussion for a different video a different time uh, for, for right now I'm gonna go through why I started the uh, excavation business and where I am now and some of the jobs and equipment that I got along the way and um, basically it was just the beginning of my operation so I'm gonna start bringing in some some slides uh, or clips and stuff to show you what um, you know where I started okay so as you can see this is kinda where we left off right where we got the uh, you know playing with the uh, trucks and, and cars and other different things so um, this was out of a, a Dodge truck I actually did that for a while too um, buying salvaged uh, trucks and parting them out and stuff like that and um, most of what uh, <clears throat> you guys remember um, I'm sure you guys remember that the, uh, you know, we had a uh, a little uh, Ford uh, 1220. I'm sure. So if you're not really familiar with the uh, the Ford 1220, um, I went ahead and bought it as a uh, salvaged out unit. Basically, tore it all the way down to the frame and completely rebuilt it. And then uh, <clears throat> that was kind of my my first real tractor with the four wheel drive and stuff and. I went ahead and got the backhoe from somewhere up north and put it on there and and you know that was my first little thing and so uh, what I ended up doing is ended up using it around my place um, to put in a, a French drain out front because I was having some some water problems and stuff so that was the very first thing that I did with it was was use it out front 
and uh, well, <clears throat> long story short is we had to, you know, end up getting rid of it because uh, we had other things going on that needed to be taken care of. So, anyhow, I think I ended up using it uh, <clears throat> for money on another tractor that I was going to get or something. I don't quite remember. Initially, uh, what I first looked at <clears throat> um, was a uh, John Deere, uh, I think it was a 2010, I think. And it was out east a little bit from Dallas, so uh, probably like, I don't know, maybe <clears throat> an hour's drive or something. I don't remember how I found it, probably Craigslist or something. But I went out there and looked at this thing, and, and, and it just it was just like there's just no way that I'm going to even attempt to try to do anything with it. Uh, it. It was just, you know, it's too old. It needed too much, been sitting too long. And it just, um, even though I didn't know exactly you know, all the, you know, stuff that I do now with machines and stuff, but it just, I can tell it was just going to be way too much. So, uh, I went ahead and, and walked away, um, from that one. And, um, so I got onto eBay and then I found a, a D3, um, that was priced pretty good and they had a video of it and I was like, well, that'd probably work out pretty good. So I went ahead and and got it and had it brought out on a uh, a trailer from I think is from Pennsylvania and so anyways uh, that was uh, I believe the f first piece that we had um, that we we got it we you know had to get it unloaded and it didn't steer and everything so we had to use the back end of a dump truck that I got that was uh, you know, had a blown motor in it and stuff. The um, heads were were cracked, so it run, but it had to be rebuilt. And so, um, you know, we used that to get it off the trailer and into the back. And one of the uh, uh, cylinders was missing, so um, I had to take the uh, the head off and and examine it and look at it. And one of the valve springs was broke and stuff like that and then the, the engine had a slight knock to it and one thing after another I ended up pulling the motor out unfortunately we weren't able to get any dirt work done with the with this one um, I ended up trading it for um, a mini excavator and something else which was not very uh, wise but you can see the Komatsu in the background in this one here and we'll be talking about uh, that to come here. Uh, off to the left, you can see the dump truck. That was the first dump truck uh, that I had. It was a 10-yard uh, truck, and it had a 7.3 liter naturally aspirated engine. Didn't have much power, no AC. You know, it just it got it got some work done, but it just was not ideal. Uh, we ended up trading it out later for a 10-wheeler. Um, sold it and got something different but I had to initially get this you know rebuild the engine and do a whole bunch of work to it to get it back going I ended up paying a thousand dollars for the truck itself and um, you know, I had to put tires on it and work on it and so you can see the purple one over there uh, I ended up getting that one later down the way but this one here carried me through for a while And then there's the Kamatsu right there that we uh, ended up buying on eBay. And um, it uh, needed a motor too as well. And you can see this yellow trailer was the first trailer I got. I ended up uh, getting this trailer. Um, that's all I could get at the time um, to swap out. I ended up having a 7,000-pound uh, trailer, which obviously ain't going to hold the, the skid steer so I had to get something which is the only thing that was in my price range I paid fifteen hundred dollars for it and um, it was all I, all I could do so I painted it and then you know fixed the truck up and painted it everything that I've done I've had to fix and work on and paint and I've had to put an enormous amount of of labor and time into 
into doing this uh, just just enormous and, and I didn't have a shop where I could put stuff in I had this small little shop in the back but I didn't have like a real shop where I could pull machines in and tear them apart and you know and that kind of stuff and really this trailer was you know built pretty stout the actual frame and, and everything else um, it just that had the mobile home axles under it and I kept blowing through tires I mean those they're just a bias ply tire they're not really designed to last that long and go that far uh, I kept going through tires and you know they're a hundred bucks a piece and uh, it didn't take long to go through the tires at all and um, you know there's just no way I had the the, the time money and, and energy and effort to you know to swap out the uh, the axles with with you know more modern axles and tires and stuff like that and rims I was just getting started um, I don't even think I did one job yet. I think this was I was getting ready to go do my first job right here in this in this in this photo here. But the trailer overall was, you know, um, good, and would have been great to keep. But just you know, unfortunately, you can't. Um, things don't always work out. Most things <laughs> you have to do all kinds of filling holes in, and you know, there's just a lot of things that you have to end up doing to make things go. Um, you know, uh, when, when you have a family that you're trying to take care of and also uh, um, you're switching careers and starting a business all at the same time. Well, on the first job that I did, um, I went ahead and sold the other trailer and then bought this one. I paid, mm, I think, 4300 for it and it holds 14,000 pounds and I still have that trailer today. Um, and it's uh, I had to upgrade these outriggers and stuff because the outriggers uh, were just too weak so I had to make some better ones I actually need to change the actual ramps around so that way you can just fold them out instead of um, having to pull them out and then put the legs down and you know and all this other stuff this is technically a car hauler not an equipment trailer but it doesn't matter it still holds the same weight so um, the day that I ended up leaving the company I was with at the time uh, my engine showed up for a uh, Komatsu CK30 the story on me getting the skid steer was uh, I paid seventy five hundred dollars for it um, went down to Austin and believe it or not at the time I borrowed the company gooseneck and trailer um, <clears throat> that I was I was working for at the time borrowed their truck to go down and pick it up um, and the thing is it didn't it had a blown motor so the, the 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 guy down there at the yard he had a d3 um dozer and we ended up pushing it up on the trailer which took a long time because you know it just it just it was just a dozer you know just couldn't quite lift it up and pull it on there and stuff it took us like an hour to finally get it loaded and so that's how we that was my first machine and i still have that machine today and it, it still is, is going strong but it had a hole in the block you know someone it was probably someone bought it and there's a repo um, it was a repo and then this guy bought it off the bank and sold it to me with a blown motor in it and so um, long story short I found a motor up in Michigan the motor actually um, that I got I paid five thousand dollars for this engine and um, it was always hard starting. It had lots of blow by, and I mean, it's just the cylinder walls were shot. It, it wasn't like they didn't change the oil, but I don't know exactly what the the problem is. But the they showed me a, a picture of the the hour meter on the machine on the machine they took it out of, but obviously it had more than eleven hundred hours on it or or something because it just didn't. It just you know it was always a hard starting engine I ended up rebuilding the engine later on down the road but uh, <clears throat> anyways uh, this is the first time that I went ahead and used it in the backyard and used the truck just to kind of test things out and everything before we actually put it to work
couldn't get any worse, <clears throat> so to speak. I had nowhere to uh, keep my equipment. I was starting to get too much. The neighbors, someone called the uh, city on me, and uh, I had to scramble to put a fence together to keep the stuff behind the fence so people wouldn't see it. Uh, since I live in the neighborhood, you're not actually supposed to do any of that, and I didn't have any anywhere else to go. Didn't have, you know, a whole lot of jobs going. Didn't have a whole lot of anything really yet, and so um, I think I scrambled up like 900 bucks to, uh, you know, get um, used, um, basically used fencing material, and then put the fence up, and um, so I can you know keep all the stuff behind the lines but I just just did not have you know the the time and resources you know for this I just it's just not what I needed you know I was trying to do so many things I just got the equipment kinda going and running and I needed jobs coming in I needed money coming in I was spent all my money I was already ten thousand dollars in the hole with credit cards and just everything started to get real crazy and I needed to work and unfortunately you know, here I am trying to put a fence up, spending more money, and um, that kind of thing. So, it 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 just it's just the beginning. You know, this is just the beginning of this whole thing. It ain't even nowhere near the end, um, and the headaches don't stop either. Trust me. So this is the uh, first job that I ended up doing in Plano, and the guy was a um, restaurant, he was doing a, a remodel on a restaurant, and um, it turned out that uh, it was a good contact, because later on, the uh, I met a landscaping company, and the landscaping company introduced me to a builder, which I currently still do jobs for now, and he does high-end homes over in Dallas, so that worked out good and you know uh, it, it always boils down to you know um, you know word of mouth in this particular type of business and so it worked out um, good um, <clears throat> doing this job and everything but I don't remember exactly what I was charging I think back in those days I was charging like 75 an hour uh, four hour minimum and those you know I don't do that now because you know 75 an hour four hour minimum you know, it's 300 bucks, and that ain't even, you know, it's just not going to work out. Uh, you can do the math and do the calculations yourself, and, you know, for $300 to, to load up and unload and then load up and unload and go here and go there, it's just, you're trying to, you know, you either do a full day or not at all. So I charge this for full days and stuff, and it's more than 75 an hour now, and, and you know, that's just, um, the way it needs to be. Now what I'm going to do is upload some of the jobs that I've done and I used to do just about anything that I possibly could because I had to you know bring in the money. I was doing landscaping, I was doing fencing, I was doing you know tree trimming, tree cutting, um, you know not a lot of people knew me you know and all I had was the skid steer so you know you're somewhat limited you know you can't you know go and, and do um, large excavation projects. The D3 wasn't nowhere near ready um, and I didn't have the money to put into it after the dump truck and skid steer and the fence and just everything so um, you know I didn't I didn't have anything to do with that or could do with the, the dozer at the time so um, so I'm gonna go through some of these jobs that I did real quick so that way it doesn't bore you anymore so that way you'll know and see um, you know I just did just about everything really and, you know, a lot of these jobs just, you know, they weren't real high-paying jobs. You didn't earn a whole lot, you know, and stuff like that. And I was just learning the ropes, you know, as far as the bidding and, you know, and stuff like that. And this was actually, uh, I was starting this business when the economy was just now turning around from the 2008 crash. So it was still pretty pretty bleak out there. You know, people were still scraping by, you know, um, and stuff like that. And not as bad down here in Texas as other places in the country, but still bad enough.
were done uh, when I first started, um, probably a couple years, in the first one to two years. Um, basically, once I had that five-yard truck, that's pretty much all I had for two years, and then I got that 10-yard purple truck after that. Uh, for um, I was using that for another couple years, and then I got out of trucking completely which is something uh, we can discuss as a, a different issue later. But um, <clears throat> basically, this will be part one, uh, first couple of years and stuff. And um, then I'll, I'll go into part two, which is you know, we got a little bit of different equipment and um, some other different things, different jobs and, and that kind of thing. But uh, this will be the end of part one.